we thought it would be a good idea to just take a step back and really explain what the PMD is, the big part of what wisdom is. So let's really understand what we're talking about. Uh, the, the first thing we want to talk about is just what is a speaker. So this is my um, take on building a you know, homemade speaker. And all it is is a, is a big magnet and a little piece of wire and a 9-volt battery is my power. And if I connect it, let's see, I don't make the wire. I can make the wire move. Does everybody see that? Okay. And all that's happening is that the, 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 the wire is sitting inside the magnet, putting some, some power through it, some current through it, will generate a magnetic field which makes it move. And that's every speaker is built on that same principle. Um, microphones are built on the exact same principle, but in reverse. Um, power plants generate power in the same way, right? They have big magnets. Windmills generate power, right? It's all the same basic thing. With a, you know, a magnet and a wire, you can, uh, and power, you can make it move, or you can make, make power the other way, right? I could move that wire and it would actually make some current happen. So really powerful, but how do we use that? So here's a disassembled speaker and this, you know, goes like this, right? That's my whole speaker. So I have a coil of wire. Here's my coil of wire. It's connected to uh, the spider, which just holds it in place, right? And you can see that's where the, you know, the, the power goes through. And generally, it's going to be glued to a cone or a dome if it's a tweeter, right? So that when this moves, it moves the cone and makes sound. In, in a typical uh, dynamic driver, the magnet's on the back. <clears throat> and that's a woofer or a tweeter is going to be basically the same. It's just different size. Um, and I can do the same thing. So I've taken this off so you can see it. Uh, let's see if I got this right. Let's see, I can make that whole thing move. All right, cool. All right, so, so that's, uh, yeah, if you recognize this song? Yeah, um, obviously if it was connected to a cone, we would actually get some, we would hear something. It, it wouldn't sound very good, but you know, that's because I have no rhythm. Um, all right, so that's the basics of a speaker. You guys are all now speaker engineers. Um, we're gonna put you to work. So what, what do we mean when we say planar magnetic? Well. So here's our coil of wire, right? We've put it on a, a, a film, but this is just an aluminum trace that's, that's etched into this, this film, very thin, but it's still just a coil of wire and it's flat. And I have my magnets, and instead of being a, a big round magnet like is in here, it's just bars which are also flat. And when I put these next to each other, they're now in the same plane, right? So this is, what it means by planar magnetic, right? Pretty, pretty simple concept. Um, that took me, you know, probably 10 years to figure out. Um, so you're all experts now. The cool thing about uh, doing something like this is we can do shapes that we couldn't necessarily do in other forms. So this is a ICS3. You can see it's just a round coil that's flat. Um, we can make them really big. So this is the uh, Sage 24 inch. It's, it's just a nice long trace. Um, or we can do something really, really big like the Wisdom. So this is what's inside the Wisdom panel for the LS3 and the LS4. You can see there's a, a tweeter trace and, a, and a, basically a mid-range trace on the outside. And we can do shapes that, and sizes that you couldn't necessarily do with a traditional design. It gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, all right, so let's make it work and see if we can blow it up. So now I have my uh, ICS3, which is just uh, this thing, but uh, in a nice uh, handy carrier that I can hold in my hand. This is just a little signal generator, so it's gonna make a you know a sine wave um, and a small amplifier. So I turn it on and nothing happens because there's no magnets. If I take the magnet, it starts to make noise. Okay. Um, different sizes, different shapes, almost doesn't matter. But it's not very loud. 
So what we need to do is actually optimize the magnet for this coil of wire. In this case, the magnet's in the center and around it on the outside is a steel sleeve and that is where the magnetic circuit goes through. And if I get this in here, see it's already a lot louder. Oh, that's annoying. But you can see just by putting it in a small magnet that is in the right position, how much louder it really plays. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, we also use a front magnet. So there's a little tiny neo magnet right here in the middle. And if I, you can hear it, it'll start to get a little bit louder. That's just increasing the strength of the magnetic, magnetic circuit, which improves efficiency. Now what's really cool about these, <clears throat> these little tiny magnets, you don't realize how powerful they really are. Um, you know, it's actually really hard to get this on. I encourage you to try. One-handed. Can you do it? Nope. No. Yeah. Nope. Oh man. Nope. Ten bucks if you can get it on. Somebody did it in the last one. Yes. Oh really? Yeah. Yep. Whoop. No, he cheated. He cheated, but he did yeah. do it. Think about it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah, you just... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, like, oh. Okay, so, okay. so what kind of now. clearances do you need between those, between the magnets? Or is it just, no, is it, it everything's possible. variable based on? <clears throat> based on the application. Okay. So like, like possibly the, the, like the mid-base drivers would be on this, there's more of a game, Go on, have a go, um, go on. More excursion. Okay. Um, for the tweeters, it's a lot tighter. Okay. It's not going to play as low, right? Okay. Um, cause like the, the wisdom panels of large sorry, mid ranges sorry. go down to 80 Hertz. Don't forget this. So that's opposed to a lot of the tweeters that are going to go down somewhere even 600, which is still quite low, um, but it doesn't really require so much excursion. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Think of it as you don't need to, mm -hmm. it's not necessary. The bigger is not to play louder. It's just to get more frequency, right? Think of your drum. You have a, uh, snare drum, you know, yeah. 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 Skin, so PMD over a rim. You go to the floor tom, it's four times, and now when you hit that one, you go much lower in frequency. Right. Mm, that's yes, really yeah. the, the, the big advantage. Okay. Is that? Yeah, that's, it's just, it's just glued in there. Hmm. Of the planar dragon is that, oh. um, that's okay. It's, no, it's, it's broken. <laughs> uh, so the planar yeah. drivers have the the, uh, the the aluminum traces, which is our coil, mm, is exposed, it's right? It's, you can see it, it's, it's just to the air. Unlike this, where mm. you know all this is buried deep inside here. So to most drivers, the, the coil, the magnet, the steel, mm. it's a giant heat sink, so it, it soaks up the heat and so it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And even when you turn it off, it's yeah, still so hot. Just pull in the middle and you lose like efficiency it and eventually it blows up. It. Right, that's the, my speaker stopped working, right? I played it too loud, my speaker stopped working. Well, something is short-circuited here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, sorry, I just gonna say, what he said, it, you get lower efficiency. So you're making something that you want to play louder, but when the heat is trapped in there, as it goes up, you're losing power, right? Yeah. Which is, from a design standpoint, it's kind of crazy. That's, that you're not getting that with the, the PMD because you, you, you get a lot more how's surface the, area to How's the heat dissipating it. in the PDM? Sorry? How's the heat dissipating in the PDM? Well, that's what we're gonna show you right now. So actually it is, so this is exposed right here and there's not a, a, a ton of uh, steel uh, in these designs. So there's not a lot of uh, you know, metal to, to sink the heat in the first place, but also the part that is going to get relatively hot is in fact exposed to the air itself. So here's my, uh, I need a volunteer to hold this and tell me what temperature it is. So just pull the trigger. Yeah, Celsius? Yeah. Um, right on the trace. Yeah, just hold it. So it's in Celsius because this is a science experiment. And for, for us dumb Americans, 100 C is boiling water. So what's it at right now? 19.6. Okay, which is basically air temperature. I'm going to turn up the frequency because I'm going to make it really loud. Can you still hear it? Yeah. How about now? Yeah. Yep. Yep. How about now? Nope. Yep. Losing it. Yeah. Now? Okay. Still here? No. Okay. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> How old are you? I'm, asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 37, but I use earplugs a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about now? Jeez, awesome. that, that should be fine. <laughs> okay. So it's up around 20K, which we can't hear, but it is still playing. I can see I got uh, voltage on my meter. So I'm going to turn it up. And I'm going to set it at a relatively high level and should start heat, be heating up right now. 21, 22, 4, 26, 30, 40, 50, Jesus, 70, yeah. 80. Mm -hmm. Wow. When do we sell? Should get up to about 100. 900. All right, what's that now? 114, 20, 120. All right, so we're over the boiling pot of, of water right now, and it's just sitting there, it's just playing. Now I'm gonna turn this way down, and it should drop really quick. 70, 60, 50, 40. Still works. So what's the benefit there? Really the benefit is, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, the benefit is we can, we can both play louder into it but we can also play lower frequency. The music is, as you know, Luke's kind of explained, the vocal range, the instruments, they're not at 2K and up. They're mostly, you know, 300 Hertz, 500 Hertz, 700 Hertz. So we can play those frequencies through this little driver, which requires a decent amount of power. And it, and it will, you know, also play loud and also not blow up after, you know, the first time you play it, right? So those are all kind of the benefits of this design that we take advantage of. Um, it's not you know, specifically something that um, you can't do in other ways, but it just naturally has this ability. So you know, we wanna try and make it play as low as possible and also be as dynamic and as loud as possible so that you can't blow it up, um, which the, you know, the, the PMDs really lend themselves to that really well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Comment on the question. It was interesting to see the color change as it got yeah. hotter and hotter. Yeah, it, it'll get hot. And actually, if you look really closely, this one's corrugated. They're, they're not, mm -hmm. All of them aren't. It'll, it'll start to expand and actually flatten out. <laughs> and then when it cools, it, the corrugations come back. Um, when these are new and we do this, we'll actually get the glue to smoke off. It'll get hot enough to, to basically you know, smoke off the excess glue. Um, but we've done this enough that it doesn't happen anymore. Um, that's usually actually what fails first is the glue that holds the traces to the film. Um, if you ever look at one of our PMDs that you have blown up, which it is possible as difficult as it is, usually the trace is just, just separated, separated from the film. Um, you repair that? No, no, we just change it. We just, yeah, we just swap it out. In the earlier presentation, they talked about the importance of tension yep. on the film. Mm -hmm. As it gets hotter, does the tension change? Uh, it can a little bit, yeah. and that's the thing is that when it cools down, it'll it'll restore itself. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the question that I was going to ask is um, if you've tried other materials besides aluminum. Like um, yeah. Things. So yeah. yeah, basically the, the the real issue is weight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so one so of much. one of the reasons that these work is because they're so light. Um, so you can do it in copper, but it's much heavier. Um, you dissipate faster on that. Okay. Yeah. So there, there, there's some reasons why we use aluminum. It's, it, it is a difficult material to work with. There's only a few companies that, that can actually make this, which is uh, you know aluminum on a uh, you know on the film. This this kind of circuit is not that uncommon. Flexible circuits, right there, they're all over the place, but they typically are using copper, which is much much easier to work with. But would be you know two to three times heavier, which would then make it not work at higher frequencies or it just you know wouldn't play as loud. So we have to use aluminum. It's just the best material for this. You know. For the dryer. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that's how it works. Ron's gonna moan because we are late, but I'm yeah, still gonna so. take five minutes to tell you why are we doing this, right? Why did this guy didn't take a dome tweeter and and went this route? Um, and the benefit of that is playing more frequency. That's what Ron was showing on the graph. The reason we do that is your vocal range sits right where the crossover in most loudspeaker is, like right around two kilohertz. 
So our ears are very sensitive because that's the vocal range that we can communicate. So now you're thinking, I take a two-way, there's a dome tweeter, there's a woofer. I tap on the dome tweeter, it's maybe a metal sound. It's got a specific weight, specific speed. I take the woofer, maybe it's a paper cone. It's got a different weight, different sound, right? So now think at the voice, when they are both playing together with the crossover in the middle, you're hearing two devices reproducing the same sound with different speed, different mm-hmm. sound characteristic. Your brain knows it's that, but actually it's very accurate and knows it's, it doesn't really sound real. The moment you get down one octave and you clear that, it sounds much more natural. Mm-hmm. Now we go from this one to this guy and we go down to 300 hertz. So now we have most of the fundamental and the harmonics for all the instruments. No crossover in the thing, same speed, same everything. You see, I told you. They can't say you say it anyway. Come on. 